Welcome to our video on Educational Psychology. This field examines how people learn and how educators can improve the learning process. By understanding educational psychology, we can address key challenges in education and develop better teaching strategies. In this video, we will explore the fundamental principles and practical applications of educational psychology. Educational psychology is defined as the study of how individuals learn within educational settings, the effectiveness of educational interventions, and the psychology of teaching. It plays a crucial role in enhancing educational outcomes by applying psychological principles to the classroom. As we embark on this journey, you'll discover its importance in creating effective learning environments and addressing diverse student needs. Let's dive in and uncover the basics of educational psychology together. Stay tuned, as up next, we will look into the significant role of educational psychology in addressing learning challenges and improving educational outcomes. Educational psychology plays a crucial role in improving educational outcomes and addressing learning challenges. By understanding how students think, learn, and retain information, educators can develop more effective teaching strategies tailored to individual needs. This field examines human development, cognitive processes, and motivational factors influencing learning. Addressing challenges like learning disabilities, behavioral issues, and motivational hurdles becomes more manageable through insights provided by educational psychology. It helps educators identify root causes of learning difficulties and implement interventions that facilitate better academic performance and emotional well-being. As we delve deeper, you will see how these principles are applied to create a more inclusive and effective educational environment. Let's dive into some key learning theories, behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism. These theories offer unique perspectives on how people learn and how educators can enhance the learning process. First, behaviorism focuses on observable behaviors and how they're influenced by stimuli from the environment. It suggests learning is a result of conditioning and reinforcement, emphasizing rewards and punishments. Next, cognitivism delves into internal mental processes, highlighting the importance of mental structures and functions in learning. It emphasizes how individuals perceive, process, and store information, providing a framework for understanding knowledge acquisition and retention. Finally, constructivism posits that learners actively construct their own understanding through experiences and interactions. This theory advocates for a more personalized approach, where educators facilitate rather than dictate the learning process. Each theory has profound implications for educational practice, offering diverse strategies to engage and motivate learners. We will explore each theory in more depth, showcasing practical applications and examples in the classroom. Behaviorism in education focuses on observable behaviors and their environmental influences. Principles of behaviorism suggest that by controlling stimuli, we can shape desired behaviors in students. This theory has substantial applications in classroom settings. Positive reinforcement, such as praise or rewards, can encourage students to repeat good behaviors, while negative reinforcement can reduce unwanted behaviors by removing an unpleasant stimulus. By understanding and applying behaviorism, teachers can create more effective learning environments. Incorporating behaviorist techniques helps manage classroom dynamics and individual behaviors. As we move forward, you'll see how behaviorism intersects with other learning theories, providing a comprehensive approach to education. In educational psychology, cognitivism highlights the role of mental processes in learning. This theory delves into how learners process, store, and retrieve information, emphasizing understanding and memory. By focusing on these internal mechanisms, educators can foster a more effective learning environment. Principles of Cognitivism Advocate for Teaching Methods that Encourage Active Engagement and Critical Thinking Utilizing visual aids, concept maps, and techniques like elaboration and mnemonic devices can strengthen memory retention. Applying cognitivism involves designing activities that require deep mental processing. Encouraging discussions, problem-solving tasks, and reflective practices can enhance cognitive development. 
we'll uncover how these strategies manifest in real-world classrooms in our continued exploration. Constructivism in Education proposes a revolutionary approach where students actively construct their own understanding and knowledge. This theory emphasizes that learning is an active, contextualized process of building knowledge rather than acquiring it. The principles of constructivism center around student engagement, critical thinking, and problem solving. Classrooms embracing this theory encourage reflective thinking and collaborative learning. In practice, this could mean using project-based learning, where students explore real-world problems and challenges. Teachers in a constructivist classroom act as guides, providing environments for students to explore, ask questions, and share ideas. The role of the teacher is to support students in connecting new information with prior knowledge. We'll explore more strategies to enhance learning experiences as we delve deeper into educational psychology. Understanding and implementing constructivist practices is just one piece of the puzzle. Understanding how children think and learn is pivotal in shaping effective educational practices. Today, we'll delve into cognitive development theories that illuminate this process. First, Jean Piaget's stages of development outline how children progress through distinct phases of cognitive growth. From sensory explorations in the sensorimotor stage to abstract thinking in the formal operational stage, Piaget's theory emphasizes the evolving nature of a child's mind. Next, Lev Vygotsky's sociocultural theory asserts that social interaction and cultural context play crucial roles in cognitive development. Vygotsky introduced the zone of proximal development, highlighting how children can achieve higher cognitive functions with guidance and support. He also emphasized scaffolding, where educators provide successive levels of temporary support. These theories offer invaluable insights for crafting educational strategies catering to different developmental stages and social contexts. As educators, integrating these perspectives creates enriching and supportive learning environments. We'll see practical classroom applications of these theories, enhancing both teaching methods and student outcomes. As we delve deeper into cognitive development, we encounter Piaget's renowned theory. Piaget identified four stages of cognitive development, the sensorimotor stage, where infants learn about the world through their senses and actions, the pre-operational stage, where young children begin to use language and think symbolically, though reasoning is still intuitive and egocentric, the concrete operational stage, where children start to think logically about concrete events, and the formal operational stage where adolescents develop abstract and logical thinking. Understanding these stages allows educators to tailor teaching strategies to students' cognitive abilities, facilitating more effective learning experiences. We'll see how these concepts apply in real educational settings, highlighting the importance of educational psychology in our schools. Vygotsky's sociocultural theory revolutionizes our understanding of learning by emphasizing the importance of social interaction and cultural context. Central to this theory is the zone of proximal development, where learners can achieve more with the guidance of a more knowledgeable other. This highlights the significant role of educators and peers in facilitating learning through scaffolding, the supportive framework that helps students develop higher understanding. By providing appropriate support, Educators can gradually transfer responsibility to students, fostering independence and deeper learning. Vygotsky's insights are practical and transformative, enriching educational practices. Leveraging social interactions and cultural tools can create rich, meaningful learning experiences. Next, explore how intrinsic and extrinsic motivation play crucial roles in educational success and strategies to nurture them in the classroom. Motivation is a key factor in educational success. What drives motivation in students? There are two primary types, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation comes from within, fueled by genuine interest and personal satisfaction. It's about the joy of learning for learning's sake. Think of a student who dives into a book fascinated by the story, not because of a test. Extrinsic motivation is driven by external rewards, such as grades, praise, or rewards. Imagine a student studying hard for a good grade, that's extrinsic motivation. 
both types have unique benefits and drawbacks. Intrinsic motivation often leads to deeper understanding and long-term engagement, while extrinsic rewards can be effective for short-term goals and initiating interest. How can educators harness both types to enhance student motivation? Setting clear and achievable goals helps students stay focused. Providing constructive feedback encourages improvement and maintains enthusiasm. Engaging activities and creative lessons keep learning interesting. By combining these strategies, educators can create an environment that nurtures both intrinsic and extrinsic motivation, leading to a more motivated, engaged, and successful student body. We'll see practical examples and techniques for these principles in any classroom. Intrinsic motivation is the driving force that comes from within a student. It's fueled by personal interest and the joy of learning for its own sake. Unlike extrinsic motivation, which relies on external rewards like grades, intrinsic motivation encourages a genuine love for the subject. For instance, a student might dive into a history book out of sheer curiosity about the past. This type of motivation is powerful in education because it leads to deeper engagement and stronger retention of information. When students are intrinsically motivated, they are more likely to explore and pursue learning beyond the classroom. We'll uncover the benefits of fostering intrinsic motivation and practical strategies to nurture this in students. Extrinsic motivation is driven by external rewards like grades, praise, or tangible rewards. It plays a significant role in education by encouraging students to achieve specific goals. For example, receiving a high grade on a test because of diligent study or earning praise for completing a challenging project. However, extrinsic motivation has benefits and drawbacks. It can provide immediate incentives for students, particularly those who struggle with self-motivation. But relying too heavily on external rewards can undermine intrinsic motivation, fostering dependence on rewards rather than genuine interest. Understanding the role of extrinsic motivation can help educators balance these incentives with strategies to nurture students' inner drive. Let's explore effective strategies to enhance student motivation. Boosting student motivation is key to enhancing educational outcomes. Let's explore three effective strategies. First, goal setting. Encouraging students to set achievable and meaningful goals can drive their progress and provide a sense of purpose. Next, feedback. Constructive and timely feedback helps students understand their strengths and areas for improvement, fostering a growth mindset. Finally, engaging activities. Using interactive and stimulating tasks keeps students' attention and makes learning more enjoyable. These strategies are foundational in creating a motivating learning environment. We'll see how these techniques integrate into a broader educational psychology framework to enhance overall student engagement and success. In our journey exploring educational psychology, we have seen how crucial it is in refining teaching methods and designing effective curricula. When educators understand psychological principles, they can adapt their teaching strategies to cater to diverse learning needs fostering a more inclusive and productive environment. Educational psychology informs curriculum design by highlighting the importance of catering to various learning styles and developmental stages. It's not just about what we teach, but how we teach it, making learning more engaging and effective for students everywhere. These insights have a profound impact on both teachers and students, helping to cultivate a more dynamic and responsive educational system. As educators integrate these psychological principles into their classrooms, they create learning experiences that are impact-fail and transformative. With educational psychology as a guide, we are paving the way for future generations of learners to thrive. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of educational psychology. Stay tuned as we summarize the key takeaways we've covered so far. As we conclude our journey through educational psychology, Let's recap the key points we've covered. We started with foundational learning theories like behaviorism, cognitivism, and constructivism, each providing unique insights into how students learn. We delved into cognitive development, understanding pivotal theories from Piaget and Vygotsky that highlight mental growth stages and social factors in learning. 
Lastly, we tackled motivation strategies, distinguishing between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation and effective techniques to enhance student engagement. In summary, these core principles, learning theories, cognitive development, and motivation strategies are the backbone of educational psychology, offering vital tools for educators to improve learning outcomes. By integrating these insights into teaching, we can create enriching educational environments tailored to diverse student needs. Stay tuned for more empowering content. Thank you for watching. We hope this video has enriched your understanding of educational psychology. To continue learning, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. Your engagement and support help us provide valuable educational resources. Let's further explore the fascinating world of psychology and education together. Don't miss our upcoming videos, hit the subscribe button now.